Welcome to today's workshop, Ensuring Quality in Online Courses. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Um, how do you know if your online course is good? More importantly, how do you make it better? So in this workshop, you're going to learn about why uh, quality is important and how to create more student-centered online courses by using the Quality Matters rubric, which is a nationally recognized benchmark for online course design, and it's based on research-supported best practices. After the workshop, uh, you'll be prepared to develop or improve an online course that is designed to promote as student learning. So let's look at today's uh, agenda. Uh, we'll start with introductions, um, which is important, uh, and then we'll, we'll start looking into some important questions like what does uh, who does quality matters uh, who does quality matter to and why do we want quality online courses in the first place we'll also investigate what is quality matters uh, we'll look at the factors for online course quality and there are several of them that are super important uh, we'll be looking at quality matters at niu we'll uh, also investigate the rubric eight general standards that Quality Matters uses. And then we'll finish up with some quali uh, some question and answers and, and some wrap up, all right? So I'd like to start off with a little bit of, uh, with introductions and what brought you to this workshop today. So if you look in the lower right-hand corner, you're gonna see a purple thumbnail at the bottom right corner of your screen, and then you can click on it, uh, and then uh, there's gonna be a little a chat bubble. And in that chat bu bubble, I'd like you to enter your name, your department, and then maybe a little bit about what brought you here today, what your interest is in today's workshop. So feel free to type away. Uh, I'll check uh, in on you in just a moment. Or if you want to use a microphone, just raise your hand and, and wait for, oh, you have someone joining us. Raise your hand and, and wait for me to call on your name before you unmute your microphone and speak. All right, thank you. Now, asking students to raise their hands before engaging the microphone to speak is best practices uh, when teaching an online course. And raising hand helps keep the discussion organized and clear for the participants who are attending and those who may not have attended but are viewing this recording later on. So I'm going to start with the introductions. Hi, Mark. And welcome to today's session. Right now, we are. I'm asking folks to do a little introduction, like providing their name, uh, your department, and then what what's your interest in today's workshop? What brought you here today? So if you want to put that in the chat area, lower right-hand corner, uh, uh, there's a little purple tab. If you click on that, it'll open up, and then there's a bubble, which is an icon, the first icon in that row of, of icons in the, in the, on the bottom. And you can just type in your name and department and, and what brought you in here. I'm going to start with the introduction. I think most of you know me. <laughs> most, both of you know me. My name is Dan Cabrera. I'm the Multimedia Coordinator in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning, uh, and I'll be presenting for today. Um, I earned a PhD and a master's degree from the school, the UCLA School of Public Health, and I've been teaching in higher education for more than 25 years at NIU for both graduate and undergraduate students. Um, let's see, and online in some format since about 1999, so I've had a long history of, be of having an online presence. Um, I also have been uh, with the um, uh, Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning, although back then it was called the Faculty Development Instructional Design Center. Since 2002, uh, I'm teaching faculty and instructors, pedagogical applications of technology. In, the, in addition to conducting workshops like the one we're having today, I also have a one on uh, have had one-on-one -on -one consultations with a lot of you, um, a lot of faculty on campus in many departments. I create documentation for our de departmental website, much of it about Blackboard, which is our learning management system. So let me look at uh, introductions today. Yunju is in public administration, uh, faculty there. She's interested in improving the quality of her course materials and management. Thank you so much, Yunju. And then Mark, um, Department of Accountancy. Uh, I teach mostly in person. However, I hold meetings with students online, and I'm interested in teaching online. Uh, that is gr something great to aspire to, and I'm, I'm glad you're here for today's session. So I want to ask, um, now we're here today to discuss online courses and how to ensure that your online courses that reflects quality or a higher, a higher standard. So this is an introduction to Quality Matters, and we'll get into what Quality Matters is in just a few minutes. 
And what I've done is to, to provide a breakdown of the most important components of, of Quality Matters, or, or QM, and provide you with a checklist of items that, that uh, you can give serious consideration to when you're designing your online courses. So when we're discussing online courses, I'm going to ask this question. This is a real question, not, not a rhetorical question. Who do you think Quality Matters to? Quality for online ins instructors. And I, I'd like you to, to add in the, in the chat area, the same place where you added your introduction, who do you think quality matters to for online teaching? And I, I think there's some ones that should come to mind immediately, um, logically. Um, so just type in who you think it matters to. And I'll give you a minute. All right, perfect. You and Jim? Yeah. Students and teachers, very, very good. And and they are the clearly the most the the most obvious ones, but they're are, are actually uh, a few more in there. So if you can think of others that might might actually fill us. Hey, yes, Mark, society. Better students equals a, a, a better members of society. I like that. Okay, well, let me, uh, let me uh, add to that list right here. Sure. Students and, and faculty, absolutely. Um, administrators. Um, University administrators, the university community at large, which can include everyone, accrediting agencies, um, yes, legis. Well, all right. So uh, I, I think it's important that NIU, because it is an, a, a uh, state university, we need to include our state legislators and our taxpayers. They, they all want to know that our university courses are, are all quality, and those uh, those online courses, you know, should reflect that. So I think we're correct by saying pretty much everyone, quality matters to everyone. I would say maybe even parents of students coming to the university, they want to know that their tuition dollars are going toward quality courses. So that's why this topic should really be important to all of us. And I'm sure that's why everyone is really interested in learning more about it this afternoon. Okay, so we now, uh, we now know who might be interested in uh, quality. But why do we want quality online courses? Well, um, and you know, I, I guess I guess we should all hope that everyone wants uh, quality courses. Of course, the first reason has to be to improve student learning and student success. Student success is a very very popular uh, term. It's I guess a buzz term now like this, uh, but it is significant. It's meaningful. It's important to the university, not just to our university, to all universities. And this uh, also goes hand in hand with improving student retention, uh, which is important to higher education also uh, as well. And we want quality online courses so that uh, students stay with the university, uh, that they stay in our courses, that they complete the course, they complete the program, and they graduate. Uh, we, want, we want them to, to have success in that. Now quality, uh, as reflected in a well-designed course, can also prevent cheating. If it makes it makes it easier for students to participate, to engage, to work with uh, with you and other students like that, they're less likely to try to, to to skate by by cheating. And I think that's something that we definitely have concern about when we start this online learning environment or adventure. Um, so it can definitely promote interest in the content, you know, in uh, our course content. We want to have people who are engaged. We want to have people who are not distracted by other things, who are fully um, immersed in our uh, in what we want to teach them in our subject matter. So I know that every course that you teach, you have an interest and a passion for, but that can also be translated in an online course if you incorporate some of these quality guidelines that we'll be talking about today. And then it can promote lifelong learning. So after your students leave your course and leave, leave the university when they graduate, uh, they'll maintain this desire to want to learn uh, for the rest of their life. A lot of things are happening online now, and so there's opportunities for them to to reach out beyond the university. And a good quality online experience in school can help them foster some of that passion for lifelong learning, which is what we want to promote. So when it comes to online courses, how do we define quality? How do we measure quality? Uh, and then how do we evaluate it? I think all of us have some idea in our heads about what quality courses look like. There are certain things, maybe even as a student, that we've decided that made the course better for us, more practical, more easy uh, to follow along with. 
but how do we really define it in a real way and then measure and then evaluate that quality? So again, those, especially this last one, measuring and evaluate, evaluating our quality, those accrediting agencies want to know that uh, how we've got about, gone about doing that. It's really important. So that's where we bring in Quality Matters, or QM. And so that's why we've decided to introduce this in, into, at Northern Illinois University as our standard for how we're defining, measuring, and evaluating quality online courses. So take a moment to read through this. What is Quality Matters, QM? OK, so what is Quality Matters? First of all, Quality Matters is a nationally recognized set of standards in online course design. It's considered a uh, faculty-centered peer review process, and it's uh, designed to certify or evaluate that quality for online courses or any online component in your course. And so it's really important that to Quality Matters and to us that we take this approach. It is something that comes from the faculty. It's, in fact, the, the faculty is what uh, are included as part of the group that is looking at the course. It's, it's, it's not it's not administrators necessarily, it's, it's actually people who, who teach themselves. And any of these evaluative processes are a process of, of peers, our fellow, and fellow faculty members. And it's also a set of tools and standards for designing and reviewing online courses. So even if you don't have a course to be evaluated and reviewed for quality standards, you can still use the tools uh, to even start your design. Now, to me, it, it takes, all, uh, takes a form of almost like a checklist of things that you can accomplish to really ensure that your courses are achieving quality. So there are some underlying principles of quality matters. They call them, and I'm not sure if, it's, uh, if it just happens naturally, because uh, they're trying to be clever, but it, uh, they came up with these four C's. It, it really is meant to be a continuous process. It's a process. It's something that's cyclical. Uh, you always want to tap in and improve your course and make uh, improvements. Uh, so nothing's ever really finished. It's always a cycle of continuous improvement. It's centered in a, num in a couple of different ways, both in research and student learning. All of these standards are based off of research. It's not someone's, ex just as someone's anecdotal experience or uh, some sort of a kinesthetic sense of their gut. No, it's, ba it's based on research. Now, in studies that individuals and organizations have done over many years, it's not just a group of people uh, where they say, I've got a room and OK, I think this is what we should do. It's really based on research, uh, but it's also based on student learning. So it comes from the perspective of student learning, uh, a student learning approach. And I think this is one of those things that we said was, is really, really important. So it's about improving student learning. It is collegial. It's a faculty-driven process, as I mentioned. People involved in a review of your course through Quality Matters really are, are fellow faculty members. It's a safe process uh, from, from, their, from their peers that happen to be in the trenches with them. It's a very supportive environment. And then finally, it's collaborative. It's meant to be a process between perhaps a course designer and instructional designer. Maybe faculty that uh, have, might have developed a course in the past or faculty that are going to be, de going to be developing uh, a course really can rely on it by working with uh, someone like a faculty, uh, like an instructional designer. And all of these folks become this collaborative team uh, in really defining, measuring, and evaluating what quality is. So I'm going to take a breath as we all absorb all of that, and we're going to look at some of the factors of online quality course. Uh, so, over online course quality. But there are many things that go into quality courses, and here are some of them. Uh, there is the course design, which is how is it put together? Uh, there is the delivery, uh, how it's actually taught when the course is unfolding. Okay. How good is the core, is the content that you're using? Now, sometimes people are have been teaching a course for many years and they don't really update the content. Maybe they're used to using a particular book and the book is somewhat dated. Um, that's important also, and in fact, in, as you as you look at at quality matters, 
the rubric, you'll, you'll see one of the things that it talks about is, is what the content is being presented, is it current? Okay. Uh, if it's not, then that's something to, to be concerned about, something to be dinged. Now, the learning management system or the uh, uh, you know, learning management system or the course management system really is, is also an important component because if, if you're doing this online, you want to have a platform in which to teach from. Here at NIU, that platform is Blackboard. The university infrastructure. And what are the other things that are going on besides the courses? For instance, how's the admissions process? Okay, I mean, we having are we bringing in more students uh, this year than we did last year? And how are these student support units? Again, this can also affect the quality of courses. Are there uh, are there academic support units like a writing center? Um, are there is there a consultation center or uh, for people uh, who who need uh, perhaps maybe some assistance with their psychological health? And then the last two are the faculty, the question is, are the faculty ready for this? Um, and indeed, are the students ready for this as well? Some faculty who've been teaching face-to-face -face may be a little bit um, hesitant to jump into this right here. And, and they may even feel that there's some downside to it, like I'm not connecting with my students. I've been teaching online, uh, I've had some online component for a long, long time. I actually feel uh, that I am more connected with my students in an online course because I interact with them a lot more than having a course which is uh, I'm standing in front of them and I may not recognize or, or, or have a lot of interaction outside of my lecture time. Um, so here's a just, just sort of a, a list of, thing of, of items that can all influence the quality of an online course that you need to keep in mind. Okay, so let, let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about what uh, quality matters is not. Okay, first of all, I want to say what it is, and of this list right here, you see a lot of things are crossed out. What is not crossed out, it is course design because it is all about course design. For at least the next 45 minutes, we're going to be taking talking specifically about course design. In some cases, uh, we'll slip into course delivery a little bit, or, or what I actually call the teaching of the course. Uh, because there's definitely some gray areas. Uh, we do have workshops that are specific on quality online course delivery, but that's not what we're talking about today. We'll start with a similar uh, webinar as this one at, uh, where we can really go over th uh, things generally. So if you have any questions on that, uh, what a quality course delivery is, I, wa I will point you toward what some of those workshops are. Uh, toward the end of the course, uh, this workshop. But of course, I'll be happy to answer them quickly for you here if you have any questions. So, factors of an online course quality, course course design, that's what it is. However, uh, what quality matters is not. Quality matters is not about individual instructors, okay? Once again, it's not like you as the instructor are not doing it right, you are blowing it. And it's not that at all, okay? It, it's about uh, course design. So it's not a performance evaluation. And it doesn't really measure the individual's, uh, the individual ins instructor's ability to teach online. As a matter of fact, when course reviews are done, a course shell is created. And in some ways, you really can't see how the instruction has been designed into the course. Okay. So it's not about performance. Um, quality matters is not about faculty evaluation in any way. It's, it's more about the course quality. Now, in many cases, courses are uh, are now being designed and developed by perhaps one faculty member and then delivered by another. I'm, I've seen this time and time again where someone builds a course, they teach it for one or two times, and then it's handed off to another faculty member. So really, it has to be based off the quality, the course quality and not about the faculty who, uh, who are, are teaching the actual course, Okay, just so that you know that. Uh, it's not a pass or fail test, okay? It's simply a diagnostic tool. And so that uh, is a way for designers and, and developers to be able to look at for different instances of quality in their online uh, courses. But like we talked about before, it's a continuous improvement process. So anything in a quality course that's being reviewed that may not be uh, up to the standards that we're looking for, it's, it's, it's just that it might have not met that standard yet. Uh, but we're going to be working collaboratively, to, collaboratively together to get to course uh, at that point that where it is met. 
Uh, quality Matters is not about creating the perfect course. Um, quality Matters looks for courses that are better than average, uh, or what they've determined, and the course reviewers have determined that to be uh, about 85%, which is about a B plus, uh, basically. And what I mean by that is, is that there is a scoring um, system in Quality Matters, <clears throat> and that you should have at least 85 out of 100 points scored. Uh, so it's not necessarily a, a perfect course. And even if you have a, a, a score that's 99%, uh, which of course is going to pass, there's always room for improvement. Okay, let's get back to that idea about continuous improvement. We're always working to make it better, to refine it, to revise it. So there can never be a perfect course. There's always things that can be tweaked or improved upon. And so we're not looking for perfection, but we're definitely looking for better than average. So this is a Quality Matters course review process. Okay. So we're going to start here at the top. Let me see if I get my little pointer here. This is the top. And this is the course. So there's going to be a, a course. And there is the course representative. And that would be the person who teaches the course. It may not have been the person who designed the course. But what a course is being reviewed uh, in Quality Matters, um, you start with, with, <laughs> with the course. OK, that begins at the top of the cycle. And institutions decide to examine an online or even a hybrid course as part of a, a peer review. So the institution may submit its uh, course for Quality Matters for a formal review, or if the institution is a QM subscriber, it may conduct a formal course review in-house, which is both a formal Quality Matters review and a formal in-house process that leads to Quality Matters uh, recognition. And, and, and that really is less like getting a black belt in martial arts. That's really uh, what we, we should all uh, seek for. Now, the institution may also decide to use the rubric informally to do a review using its own processes. This informal process does, does not lead to quality matters recognition, but it gets the course ready so that it can be submitted for a formal review and uh, more likely to, to be favorably reviewed if it has uh, this preparation. So this next, next aspect right here is course review. OK, that's, that is the peer re course review. Now, the course is then reviewed by a team of three peer reviewers using the Quality Matters rubric. The Quality Matters rubric is based in national standards for best practices, the, the research literature and instructional design principles. Peer reviewers, uh, peer reviewers must have online teaching experience themselves, obviously, and then complete the peer review training to be eligible to serve on a formal Quality Matters review. The peer review team consists of at least one member from an institution other than the course's home institution. Now, the team also consists of one member from a discipline that matches that of the course. So if you have a course in psychology, you're going to have someone who has a background or teaches psychology courses. Now, this combination of researchers ensures a diverse set of perspectives. Okay, feedback. Okay, so this is the next area here. Following the course review, the reviews, uh, review team's feedback is provided to the faculty member or team that developed the course. Um, the, the feedback consists of two components. And so here, the, the faculty who submitted the course for review is getting this information. They're getting the scoring. Okay, how well did they do? It indicates that quality matters sta uh, standards were or were not met by the course. And it's, it specifies which ones were or were not. Uh, we'll be going over these, the, these standards. And then feedback, which is a rich set of uh, comments from the reviewers that indicates the strengths of the course, and then, as well as the areas for improvement and specific recommendations and suggestions for improving the course, which makes it really, really easy or much easier to say, well, where should I improve? Okay, not necessarily where did I go wrong, but how can I make this better? Now, upon initial review, the course may or may not have met Quality Matters expectations. But in either case, the Quality Matters review provides support for course revisions and improvements. That's the, the comments that I had mentioned before. If a course did not initially meet Quality Matters expectation, the team chair will re-review the course after revisions. And so it's, it's submitted back to the instructor, and that instructor Instructor looks at those comments, looks at the recommendations and the scores, and then works to, to develop it so that it can meet the uh, expectations. It'll be re-reviewed re uh, after revisions. Now, ultimately, what we want is, let's just make sure that I've got this feedback. It's the feedback and the course revisions if necessary, 
or if the course meets quality uh, expectations or is quality matters certified. So QM expects that all courses will work toward and achieve quality expectations eventually. Now the QM review process is not meant to be a test in which the course passes or fails. The overall goal really is to provide a system for the improvement of quality, of course quality, rather than a simple assignment of a grade or initial level to the, uh, or quality level to the initial course. So here, that's how the quality matters process works in its official capacity. It starts off with the course. Uh, so we're going uh, to look at the top here again. This is, that's, that's the course. And we say that we're going to be looking at a particular course that uh, we're looking for a mature course. So, so this is a course that's been taught mm, uh, a number of times so that it's worked out some of its kinks. Again, you could use this uh, as a process to design the course yourself. So not necessarily to have someone review it, but using this process to improve what it is you do. So again, you're going to use those checklists to see if you're meeting those standards. And we're going to go through that checklist in just a few minutes. But in an official quality matters review, we're going to be looking for a mature course. Okay? So it's not a course you're teaching for the first time. And then the course is going to be reviewed using a rubric. Now, it's a, it's a very dense rubric we're going to be unpacking very shortly. But the course is going, uh, is going through a review process, again, with a course representative, that would be the instructor, and some peer reviewers. And I described who those peer reviewers would, uh, would be. So other online teachers, they have, they've taken professional development to appear uh, as course reviewers. I've actually gotten that, that training myself. I did it last uh, summer. Now we're going to be reviewing the course. Uh, they're going to be reviewing the course over a number of weeks, so it's not like a one-day submission. And then they're going to be giving feedback to the course representatives, the course developers. And if the course already met expectations, then it's going to go through this sort of quick, uh, quicker arrow right here. So if it meets that expectations, it's going to jump right toward. Um, uh, you know, this quality matters cert certification. But in some cases, the courses have not met the standards yet. So they're going to get some great feedback from the reviewers. And uh, then there's going to be a course revision process where the instructional designers or the and the course representative will be able to make those revisions. And then again, uh, still be able to, uh, going to meet those expectations by resubmitting. And then the loop is continued back up again because it's a continuous process and there's always improvement to be made. Now, quality matters at NIU. Well, so that's the process, but but the quality matters uh, at NIU. Again, there's a lot more to learn about quality matters, um, and I, I'm going to follow up our uh, workshop with an email, and it's going to have um, a lot of well, it's going to have a number of links, and I'm going to I'm going to uh, share those links. Well, I'm going to share with the with the uh, I'm going to share what the websites look like right now. Uh, the web pages, I should say. So here, let me just do that. I'm going to share my uh, application. And I'll share what that looks like. All right, so this right here, this is online teaching quick start. As you can look down here, as you scroll down, uh, the focus really should be, uh, for us today, would be on a guide to course design. I'm just going to jump to that here. And that's what this is here. And you're going to see some similarities. And in, in, as we proceed, you know, starting with learning objectives, uh, course level objectives or module level objectives, assessments, learning activities. That would also include uh, content as well. It's going to ask you how to use this guide and then giving you more specific topics within this area here. Uh, one of my favorite uh, web pages though is this online print standards and principles for success and as you go into this you can actually see specifics on definitions for hybrid course definitions online course policies but my absolutely favorite part is the online course design checklist okay and this checklist and if you just click here you're gonna see the way it's broken down we're gonna go through this ourselves in the workshop uh, coming up but here's like what it looks like standard one Okay, and it gives you specific information, makes it a lot easier for you to look at and to make assessments in terms of how you're going to uh, pursue and make sure that your course meets these, even have some recommendations. Uh, okay, I'm going to go back now and return to the, the session. Let me just jump to that 
that link. Okay. So it, it's important that you recognize that, that Quality Matters is a guiding standard for course design, uh, that we use uh, Quality Matters here at NIU, but also that it's not mandatory, okay? There's no mandate to have everyone's course uh, you know, reviewed for quality, okay? Um, as I mentioned, it's, it's right now it's being used as a guiding standard for course design, and it's something we've had on campus for a few years. And, and some faculty have used Quality Matters when designing the course, which is always great, and we support that. Now, today's workshop is to help you uh, in your quality design, not necessarily to tell you that you have to have your course reviewed. So again, it's completely voluntarily, but it's the minimum quality standards for the Division of Outreach to, that they use to promote their courses. And they have a list of courses that have met at least the essential standards at NIU. We'll talk about what those essential standards will look like. Again, just if you're going to put it out there and, and promote it, you want to make sure that, that the courses have a minimum quality standard. And then there's something that's, uh, that's important. That's at, that what we have here is really a growing community of faculty who are committed to quality online courses. Now, each time I offer, or I, I do this with a colleague, this, it expands that number of faculty who are uh, aware of, of what quality or quality matters is. And that the sessions that are kind of a companion sessions uh, that support this particular workshop, we have other workshops that support this workshop. Um, and so we are growing a community of faculty. Um, now, it, it, yeah, you, if you check in on participants uh, in the lower right-hand corner, you click on that, you'll see uh, that, you, that the individuals that are here today, okay, now there are two of you here, okay, you you now are part of this growing community of faculty that are learning more and more about the quality standards that we are we're trying to achieve here at Northern Illinois University. All right, so let's look at some of these general standards, okay, uh, so let's break it down, uh, standards of quality matters rubric, and I, I think you can agree if, as we go through all of them that they really make sense to have. So I think there's some apprehension at first when you hear about standards uh, that are going to that there are going to be rules that need to be followed. But as I read through them, uh, you'll find that they really make sense. And I hear that all the time from faculty and instructors that I talk to. So the first one here is about the design has to be clear. That's that means it's intuitive for any new instructor, but probably as important or more important for the students who are joining the course, who are new to the course. Okay. The, the second one, and we'll, we'll come back to each one of these uh, in, in just a few minutes. Uh, the second one is going to be about learning objectives, making sure that the learning objectives are clearly stated. Um, and that simply means, what do I want to do in my course? And making distinctions between learning objectives that are course level, which are more broad, uh, uh, not that they're not uh, clear, and we're not saying that they have to be vague, but, but uh, they're more general. But they still have to be measurable. And then the mo the module level objectives, which is the objectives for each section, however you segment your course in weeks or units or, or whatever it happens to be, like or modules. Okay. So um, the next is assessments. And at, now the thing about assessments is simply it's you know your assessments is is, is you're measuring if you've reached your learning objectives. Okay. But the assessments should align with those learning objectives. And they, the, they should also be explained to the students. Why am I being tested on this? Why am I, why am I having to do this research paper? Okay. So making that connection between what those assessments are and what the objectives are makes it clear to the students and they have a sense of direction. Now, we don't get a chance necessarily to have those dialogues with students as we do in a face-to-face -face meeting where we can actually have a discussion with them. Um, so we really ne need to make it clear uh, in our online course the students make that connection, okay, that we make that connection for them and they re recognize that. Uh, the next item is instructional materials, and instructional materials and resources also should align with objectives. So you're going to hear this word aligned over and over again in the next, uh, in, in the next half hour or so. It's one of the founding caveats of these standards is that, that all of these things work together, and then you can have a really great assessment or have a really great you know, set of instructional materials, but if it doesn't really match the learning objectives, those are the things that you really want to be able to walk away with. Somehow, you feel that something is missing, okay? So you want to make sure that they all support each other. 
we want to make sure that the, that the, the, here, this, the number five, there's an opportunity for meaningful interaction and for online courses that are meant to foster interaction between you and the students and students with each other as well as students with the content. And that would be the learning objectives that we use. And it can really come off as really uh, passive and isolating without that. So intera uh, interaction is very, very important. It's, it's something we want to build into the course. We also want to make sure that the technology we use supports the learning and does not get in the way of learning. Sometimes we get in, we get it we fall in love with a specific technology, um, special uh, tool that we can use, but it really doesn't fit what we want to do in the course. It doesn't fit the learning objectives, but we still want to use it. We kind of sort of want to put that round peg in the in the square hole. All right, so whatever technology we use should should be in alignment with everything else we're using. And finally, we want to support students, uh, sp to provide support for students in, in real ways. And it allows them to maybe, maybe the technology to support or even supporting uh, in, in, in writing. Okay, so if you're using a technology, then you want to make sure that you have instructions on how to use that. So if you take time to look around, you'll find out there's lots of support for your online students. Okay. And, um, and, and this would be also be, <laughs> this would also be those important things that I mentioned uh, just briefly, which is online. Uh, or uh, some sort of some some sort of a, a department that helps students for learning, like like a writing center, as I mentioned before. Okay, so that's a that's a conversation started with with your administration that needs to be you know sort of buttoned up a little bit. Okay, and we really need this for our students to to achieve success. And finally, the course should be accessible and usable to all of your learners. Okay, which may, it means that that it's easy for them to navigate, it's easy for them to, especially if they have uh, an accommodation that's required, that that is addressed uh, for students. But it also is not just for students who require an accommodation, it's for all students with a, a, with a, uh, a variety of, of capabilities. So I did mention that term alignment, so let's talk a little bit about what alignment is. So let's let's unpack it. Uh, and I borrowed this diagram here. I think it's it's a great example of this. This is kind of a Parthenon foundational wall and it to explain to you what quality matters means when they talk about alignment. So at the bottom here, let me just make sure I got my little little pointer here. At the bottom here um, uh, are learning objectives. and everything is built off of those learning objectives. even uh, even though it's this general standard number two, and we'll look at that. You really need to start with good learning objectives. So they should be measurable. Okay, they shouldn't have a time component and all. Okay, and then at the top you see assessments. Assessments are going to be those measurements of how you know the students achieve those learning objectives. So they, they definitely need to be connected and working together. Learning objectives and assessments is how you, learning objectives is what you want to do, what the students should end up with at the end of the semester. And then assessments is where, how we're accurately evaluating whether they've met those objectives. But there's also a couple of other general standards that fit into this alignment theme as well. And they, they include the instructional materials, course activities, and any of the tools or technology that you, you choose to use for the course. Again, they need to be quality course. In order to be a quality course, they all need to be aligned. And so if you have a learning objective that requires certain instructional materials and uh, certain learning activities, interactional activities that actually uh, help students absorb this information to uh, to make uh, make uh, use of this and then course tools that actually will facilitate that and that all of this will support an assessment so it will actually measure what it's purporting to measure so before i, I start on, on on rubrics i see that we have about 17 or 18 more minutes left right here i want to ask are there any questions up to this point Okay, Mark, uh, you and Joe. Okay, I'm not seeing that. So let's get into the rubric uh, that, I, uh, that I wanna describe to you. Uh, I've taken a picture of what it actually looks like. People who have taken our APP QMR or applying the Quality Matters rubric uh, workshop and all a workshop actually get a copy of this themselves. Now the website that I mentioned previously has a short modified version of the rubric and, uh, and I've, I have shared that with you. Once again, I'll share the link to you when, when uh, I send out a follow-up email to you. So as you can see, it's, it's very detailed. Uh, each of the general standards uh, can also contain specific review standards. So right here, 
we, this is the general standard one, course overview and introduction, and then there are specific review standards here. This, this, and like this first one for course overview and introduction is instructions make clear how to get started and where to find various course components, and then you go down the list here. Um, so I'm using my arrows here to point out things that are important uh, and using the rubric. So that's the specific review standard. The second one here is points. Uh, there's point value to each of these standards. Now, three points actually indicates that this is an essential standard. This is what I meant earlier when I said courses have to have met all the essential standards. Uh, they have a point value of three. Um, let's see. So Mark, uh, let me get you on. Mark says, I'm sure most online courses do not instantly become quality matter. Uh, it's approved. What is a reasonable number of semesters to teach an online course before considering applying for quality matters approval? Well, I, I would say that, as I mentioned, that it should be a course that is mature. And that might be in a uh, subjective term in terms of what you say, what you feel a subjective course. It might be uh, that you've taught the course a couple of times. Or it may be that you're constantly developing it. and and But one of the things that's beneficial for you being here today is that now you have something to look at to compare uh, with does my course have this in it? Okay, so it, it, it's not just submitting a course, it's submitting a course that, that addresses a lot of these particular things. Now, today's workshop actually introduce, introduces you to the Quality Matters rubric, um, but we have a, a, an all day course that actually will give, get more specific into it. And that's something I strongly encourage you all to, to take. So I mentioned about the essential standards, it's three points. Uh, and you have to have these standards, all of the standards uh, met in order to be able to move forward with, with review. You, you may not have all of the other standards. Uh, let me just pursue right here. Yeah. But you can see here uh, that it, it's either met or not met. And this is something that a reviewer will look at. So this is something that you can look at to see, okay, let me see if, if it really sounds like it. Now, one of the nice things is that we do have a uh, an annotation section. Um, and it contains, it really provides details about what you, what you need to look for in a course that would help you meet these standards. It's really a great tool to be able to, to, be, to be using. And here again is that scoring that I had talked about. Um, so I, I talked about the three points. Let me break it down for you a little bit more. So there are 23 of these, of these three point uh, essential standards. That's, that's, and then there's 12 points for two, uh, the, there's 12 two point standards, which are considered very important. And then seven, which are considered important, and they're only uh, worth about one point, okay? So I usually get a bit of a chuckle at this point because there's nothing that's unimportant, and, and that's really true. But what Quality Matters is looking for, again, is 85%. That's B plus average, uh, better than the average standard, I should say. So at least if, you're, if you've got 85% of these points are met, then the course is considered to have met the standards. So there's, there might be a few of these important or very important standards that you might not meet, but it's still considered a quality course. And, uh, and what, uh, what if you don't meet a standard? Well, in some cases, one of the standards, the important standards, is that the course has to be linked to a privacy policy of some sort of technology. Well, if, that's, uh, if, you're, if you're using an external technology, you're not gonna have a privacy standard. Uh, and you're not gonna have that link. You may have left out the link for the privacy standard. So you really need to be able to, be able to, to look at that to gain that point. Now, each standard has looked uh, is looked at uh, by a reviewer as meeting 85% of the standards, if that's the case. So as we go through the standards, I think it'll become a little bit more clear, and I'll give you some examples specific to the standards themselves. Okay, so once again, the total point value is 100 points. You should have all 23 essential standards, at three points each, uh, and then you not, may not necessarily have all of the very important or the important components, but it's important that you have the essential ones because they are essential. So let's look at the first general standard. We may not get through all of these standards today. Overview and course overview and introduction. Okay, so here's the first one. General standard number one really has to do with the course overview and introduction, and that's something that we're we're all concerned about bef uh, before the semester begins. We should be asking ourselves, what's going to happen when the students first get into the course? So the first specific review standard is that the instructions make clear how to get started and where to find various course components. So 
Uh, at this point, I usually ask people to, to share some ideas in the text area about what they do to make uh, uh, the course clear. I'm not sure we have enough time to get to that. I'll just make a suggestion. I usually create a screencast that walks people through the course to make sure that that they are uh, they know how to proceed. For instance, you might create a week one folder, um, which is which is important, or a getting started folder, so that students know. Well, it makes sense for them to click that getting started folder. You could also create an infographic and on how to get started in the general course flow with getting started tabs. So these are some ideas that you might want to consider. Uh, and all these make sense, uh, all that makes sense to me. Uh, you may even have, have a week zero folder and so that you get to the point where you can open up the course maybe a few days or a week early and allow students to navigate, perhaps have access to the, uh, uh, the syllabus. Um, and practice their navigation a little bit through the course and before the start of the semester. That's just a tip that you might want to consider. And now the next one stu uh, uh, is students, at this point, they should know how to get started. The next one suggests that students are introduced to the purpose and the structure of the course. Okay, how about the purpose? Well, you might want to send out an announcement prior to the first day of class indicating where to find the tabs and functions. I think we're going back to to the structure of the course. I think that's a good idea. Um, as I mentioned, I, I show this in a screencast tutorial that I walk my students through just to make sure that they understand that, that whole process of, of navigating through the course. Uh, but the purpose is in the welcome tab that I create for them. And it's, and it's also in the email uh, that explains what is the purpose of this course, you know, and, and there's, and it's, it should be something that's compelling. It's, it should be something that, that gets them excited about the content. And I think the idea behind is really just to state the purpose of the course. It might be a purpose that, uh, where it's, uh, it's sequenced in a program. Uh, maybe this is the first part of this program or it's the second, uh, second course in this program, or maybe even the skills that need to be developed. But it, you know, it's, it's something that you want to make sure that the students are aware of. All right, learning objectives. So uh, really there, there are a couple of standards on, on getting started, but I think uh, uh, this one right here, that was number one, but number two is the learning objectives. And it, both of them are essential. You absolutely have to have it. So uh, that's what you want to look for. Uh, that's, that's the kind of thing that you want to have in your checklist. So I'm going to go uh, back and check my online course and I want to make sure that I provided them with some way to get started, which is important. Um, Maybe others have been inspired. Have inspired you to to create a, a screencast themselves. Okay, so you want to make sure that they they have that that introduction. But course objectives, I said course objectives are uh, of those found are, are those foundational pieces that really connect everything. That really need to be connected to everything. And in some cases, our course learning objectives have been mandated by our department or have been written out for us. And so we're kind of living with them. We don't really have a lot of opportunity to to modify them, uh, but they really should describe outcomes that are measurable. And if you find that you're, they're not measurable, maybe that's a conversation you can have with your department. And, and believe me, we've, <laughs> we've seen that more than once. Uh, again, if you don't have an option to sort of to rewrite your own and let them, uh, let them know that, uh, let them know that quality matters, the National Recognized Research Institution says that learning objectives really need to be measurable. That might be something that you talk about with your uh, department coordinator. But normally a course developer or an online instructor will have an ability to create module level objectives and these are within the weeks, specific weeks. And so you have the top level course level objectives and the more. So an example I, I give in my own class uh, courses is, is that I've got maybe one for a course on uh, introduction to public health is, is the spread of, of, of infectious disease. And so by the end of this uh, the course, students will be able to have an understanding for the a mechanism for how pathogens are spread. And then the specific uh, module level objectives might be uh, students will be able to do, will be able to uh, describe the mechanism for airborne transmission of pathogens or foodborne or vectorborne. Okay, those are the more specific ones. So they, they are also measurable. And maybe there, there, there can be, uh, and make sure what the vocabulary, the words that you're using are also measurable. So they need to be actionable uh, uh, verbs. Um, so you would say be able to describe, to identify, to explain, as opposed to students will be able to understand. 
I don't really know what, what that means, understand. And, and so if you have a objective that just says understand, you might want to refine that so that it's more clear for, for uh, you might want to use describe instead of the word understand because it's really hard to, to measure if a student understands something. So my down and dirty writing learning objectives, they might make sure that they're measurable to start with those, those uh, action verbs. Assessments and measurements. Okay, the next one right here, we're, we're looking, we're going to measure these. How are you going to measure learning objectives? You're going to measure them through assessments. And so what Quality Matters is looking for when reviewing an online course is that the assessments are measuring the learning objectives. So the learning objectives, again, is to describe or list or explain or, you know, something. Uh, you need to come up with an assessment that will allow you to have those behaviors demonstrated to you. Okay. So uh, this next one I hear is on grading policy. Make sure that your grading policy is clearly stated. It might be something that you already have in your syllabus, but let them know your, your late work policies, how grades are weighted across your course. Uh, you want to make sure that you add this to your syllabus. I'd also recommend that you add them somewhere else, maybe in your course information area. Uh, we all know that students will briefly peruse the syllabus at the beginning of the semester, and that's sort of the last time they, they open it. So anytime you can provide a different opportunity for your students to see the grading policy that's going to really help them, it's going to, it's going to make more for a quality course. Now be specific and descriptive with your criteria for how you're evaluating your students' work. Uh, we're giving a lot of descriptive uh, criteria uh, and this rubric for how your online course will be evaluated for quality. So what are some of the ways that you can let your students know how you're going to evaluate the quality of the course? Okay, well that's something you want to consider. Make sure that they're they're aware of it. Okay, we might want, we might use a grading rubric ourselves. Um, I use an interactive grading rubric. It's a great way for uh, that the uh, that the course reviewers, peer, uh, the Quality Matters course reviewers, know that you provided some specific and descriptive criteria for how you're going to evaluate student work. And again, in the assessments webinar we we do, uh, I give you it, it gives you a lot of good ideas for grading feedback with your students in an online course. That's another supportive workshop, supportive to this particular workshop, our workshop. Instructional materials. Let me just go on to this line right here. Let's move on to this general standard, it's number four, and that's instructional materials. So the instructional materials could be textbooks, journal articles, videos you find, um, uh, any sort of material that contribute to the achievement of those stated learning objectives, both at the course level and the module level. It could be your recordings of, of lectures, anything you are providing to students as instructional materials. So again, those materials need to, need to contribute to achieving those ag objectives. So the reviewers are going to look for that connection and any way you can make those connections to the reviewers and or your students will really help make for a quality course. So if there's a particular reading that you want your students to know, let them know that it connects to the learning objective or an assessment. And it may just be a simple statement like, Read this article and it will help you answer the discussion uh, board prompt. And it's just creating those connections for your students and they also understand that it's not just busy work, that there is real meaning behind the instructional materials. Okay, learning activities and learner interaction. Uh, we want to make sure that the activities that the students do in the course is again promoting those learning objectives and that it also supports active learning. So online learning can get a bad rap because it seems to be isolating and passive. So we really need to make sure that the activities we design in the course include active learning. And because we're getting into the last few minutes, uh, I'm going to share some ideas about how learning uh, activities can support interaction. And discussion boards are really good ones that allow students to interact with each other. It definitely has a lot more action than just reading an article or just watching a lecture. Anytime that the students can do something. So it could be that they're creating a video themselves. Uh, we've talked about, uh, about you creating a video, a screencast, but maybe you could create a video or your students could create a video or an infographics. And that's really kind of having them analyze and synthesize the work with the content and then you're giving them. So those are some of the ideas that you can kind of beef up uh, that course a little bit uh, and make it a little bit more active for your students. Okay, I'm going to 
push on here to course technology. Number six is course technology. So any course technology that you choose, again, make sure it supports the learning objectives. I don't choose a technology because uh, I wouldn't choose it because you heard it's it's the thing to do. I like using screencasts that I mentioned before earlier in, in, in this workshop. But if a screencast, a screencast doesn't really uh, doesn't really lend itself uh, to what you want to do, then then don't use it. Use the technology that makes sense to your learning objectives. But you could also be using technologies to support the engagement between students. So if you've never used uh, an action verb that says discuss, you might want to. <laughs> You still may use discussion form because uh, you want the students to start talking with each other, interacting with each other. So if you do have a, a, a learning objective that has the word discuss, make sure that you have an activity that actually fosters interaction. Learner support. OK, so uh, and, and that's providing students uh, with support that be more that will be more important or instinctual for us. Uh, uh, than in a face-to-face -face course. So in a face-to-face -face course, you can actually have this discussion right here, but if it's online, you have to make it very clear where they can have access to this. It's really important to add this to an online course. So students need technical support, such as what it says, let them know how to access that technical support. It could be technical support for Blackboard. It could be technical, uh, technical support for the tools that you're using, the technology tools that you're using. Let them know how to reach out to the service desk uh, if that's appropriate, uh, the do at service desk email or phone number and the hours that they're available. First, uh, first of all, you want to give them some great, uh, great support and alleviate some of that technology anxieties that they have, but also they won't be asking you about it. Uh, so you can really focus on the on the on the content. Uh, and then again, uh, make sure that students have an, all the links that they need to those things, so it's easy for them to access. Or you could articulate any institutional accessibility policies or services. And here at NIU, that can really be something that you want to add to your syllabus with our accessibility uh, policy statement. So you can see, you can easily easily add a link to our disability resource centers if that's if that's appropriate. Okay. All right, we're almost done here. Accessibility and usability. So the final general standard is on accessibility and usability, and it's all about making sure that the course navigation facilitates ease of use for your students. And navigation is something that always seems to be, should be really intuitive. And, and our, in our minds, we know that we put everything in the course. We know how to, how to define it. And it's a really good time to have someone else look at the course to see if it makes sense to somebody else, if it makes sense to them. Sometimes I get the statement, uh, you know, why should we make it easy on them? Or are we spoon feeding them? And the idea is that if, if they get bogged down in the in the technology or using the or, or in the navigation or using the technology, it kind of bogs them down, and the, and uh, to be really engaged in what we want them to do. And this is a, and this is learning the content and being able to be successful in the course. So navigation, is a good thing. So again, allowing the students to make it easy for them to move around the course and find the content and interact with each other, rather than spending a lot of time searching for things. So these are the eight general standards. Again, they're listed out in a simple language here uh, to remind you what they are. But if you're interested in learning more, again, we have an entire series on each of these quality standards broken into more detail with some more practical examples of how to get to them in an online course. So if you're interested in quality matters that you're in, you know, uh, yourself, um, let me just move over here. These are some of the, some of the examples. This is APPQMR, which is that all day, one day workshop. We also have informal reviews where, where, where faculty come in and ask uh, members of our staff to be able, I've actually done a, uh, informal reviews uh, for faculty on their courses. This is, this is not the formal quality matters thing, which is external, uh, but it gives them a, a good idea of how they're doing and preparing them for maybe submitting for a formal uh, review. We also have a number of workshops that support uh, quality online courses, designing an accessible syllabus, feedback strat strategies to enhance learning, strategies for enhancing instructor presence in the online course, integrating technologies to foster inclusive interaction. These are all really good examples of it, uh, of uh, workshops that would support this, this current workshop. All right. So now we've come to the end. We've actually gone beyond our time, but I want to know if there are any questions, anything that I need to uh, answer. Okay, so Yunju, 
if the course is approved as quality matters course, it is noted on course catalogs for students. Um, it is yes. Uh, there is a there is a mechanism for uh, revealing this. This is not just something special for you as the instructor to have your your course quality matters certified, but it's it's also a uh, it's a gold star for your department and it's a gold star for the university. But better, more important than that, it's a gold star for students. Students have confidence that this course is going to be a quality course that they'll be able to not have any issues navigating through to the course um, and that it, it will it will uh, foster a great interaction between the, the faculty and the students the students and each other and, the, and of course the students and the content area right here and that it makes sense it's logical it's intuitive and students are engaged with the content so yes it's um, it's important um, and there is I think there is a some sort of a of a symbol an icon that is placed in the course that it says this is quality matters we don't have i don't know if there's any official course uh at niu that has that yet but you know who knows you might be the first all right other questions how do we get informal just just reach out to us okay uh center for innovative teaching and learning once again i've done it I know that my colleague uh, Amanda Smothers has also done it. Um, I don't know if we have, I think there's two more of, of, of my colleagues who have taken the training um, who have had an opportunity to do that. But yeah, we have we have staff that, that is that are ready and, and willing to do that. Okay. Mark, do you have any questions? Okay. I'm gonna stop the recording now.